Colossians chapter 3. This morning, we're in the series called Difference Makers, and I want to preach a message to you called People of the Resurrection from Colossians chapter 3. If you have it, say amen. If you don't, it's on the screen for you this morning. Here's what Paul said. If you then be risen with Christ, or if you then were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth, for you died. And your life is hidden with Christ in God. Father, we thank you for your word today that changes lives. Father, we thank you that we're not in this life alone. That we're called to live according to the power of the resurrection. That the same spirit lives in us. And Father, as we explore that idea this morning, may we understand what it means to be able to live life together, to be able to love each other and to make a difference in each other's lives. And Father, may we experience every day your resurrecting power that changes us and transforms us. We thank you for this time together. In Christ's name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Turn around and high five three people and say, People of the resurrection, and you may be seated. Mary Barber could tell you about slavery firsthand. She experienced it. She remembers what it was like for the master to scream out. She remembered what it was like to see people beaten. She remembered the mud that they had to climb through to work and the sticks and all the things that they dealt with in slavery. She remembered it because she was there. But what she liked to tell you about the most was not the slavery But it was the night she was set free. In 1935, there was a knock at her door in Raleigh, North Carolina, and it was the Freedom Project. And they were going around finding former slaves because at that time the slaves were getting older and the former slaves were passing away. And they wanted to get their information. And Mary Barber was 10 years old when her family was set set free. And they wanted to get her information out of everybody that had a testimony and a story. Mary Barber's was the one that that everybody could understand and hear. She was the one that was the clear. She remembered it the greatest. She remembered that night. She remembered the night her dad ran into the room and he got them up and he began to get them dressed. She remembered the night that her dad began to help them and say, come on, we got to go. We got to get out of here. She remembered the night she was led to a wagon and she was taken off because the Yankees were coming in and freedom was coming and her family took them. Oh, her dad took them away to freedom. She remembered that night and so she told about her freedom. Listen, I wasn't there 2,000 years years ago when Jesus rose from the dead. I wasn't there 2,000 years ago when the stone was rolled away. I wasn't there 2,000 years ago when all those things happened. When he got up out of the grave and he walked out of it. I can't tell you about that. But I can tell you about in 1988 when Jesus Christ made a difference for my life. I can tell you not about the time it happened physically 2,000 years ago but I can tell you when it happened for me. I can tell you whenever he rolled away the stone in my my life and Jesus made a difference in my life I can tell you about the freedom that I experienced in Christ because Jesus made a difference for me I can tell you what happened to me that the stone was rolled away and I experienced something new in my life and even though I wasn't there physically when it happened I believe it happened because the resurrection has made a difference in my life the resurrection has changed me and because of that I believe 2,000 years ago Jesus Jesus physically got up out of the grave and walked out of there. Amen? I believe it because I've experienced it. You see, the resurrection is not just something we experience once a year, not just something we celebrate Easter Sunday. It's not just something we come and when we clap about one time a year and we have two services because we can't handle everybody and then we go back to our normal routine the next Sunday. But the resurrection is something that literally changed history. History was changed because of it. Dates were changed because of it. The way we told the calendar changed because of Jesus. And I want you to know the same resurrection power is not something we experience on Sunday or on Wednesday or once a year but is something we experience every day in our life that he has changed us and he has transformed us amen 
We celebrate the resurrection because we have experienced it for ourselves. Here's what Paul said in Romans 6 verse 4. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also will be in the likeness of his resurrection. Paul says this, just like in baptism, when people are baptized, they go under the water. It is representing what Christ has done, that Christ went into the grave, but he didn't stay there. He came out to newness of life. We have the chance to experience experience the same newness of life that we come to know Jesus and our sins are washed away we are transformed we are changed we are made a new creation in Christ old things have passed away and behold all things have become new aren't you glad you don't have to live by your old past any longer aren't you glad you don't have to live by those things but you have been changed and you are a new creation in Jesus Christ can you help me this morning and say amen Paul says this, if we then be risen with Christ, touch your neighbor and say then. If we then be risen with Christ, Paul, listen, I'm, I don't speak English very well. I told you I'm from Mississippi. We just started speaking that about five years ago, I think. But if I understand the, the word then, it is a past tense thing. If you then be risen with Christ. That Paul is talking to people who have experienced the power of the resurrection. And Paul says, if you then be risen with Christ, there's something about your life that is different. The resurrection makes a difference for your life. And then he says, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. For ye were dead, and now your life is hid with Christ in God. When you experience the power of the resurrection, all of a sudden, sudden your affections change. Your, the things you go after changes. Everything about your life begins to change. The way you talk and walk and your attitudes, the way you deal with people, all of that begins to change because you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. That now I experience a new life. My old man has been crucified and now I am experiencing a resurrected life. When I begin to understand that, that I understand the resurrection is not just something I shout about one time but it's something I carry with me every single day that I should daily understand what it means to live in the resurrecting power of Jesus Christ amen so number one the, the, the resurrection has made a difference for us but then number two because it's made a difference for us we have to be difference makers for other people you see the problem with our Christianity is this we think that our Christianity is I just get saved so I can go to heaven one day and I'm going to sit on the sidelines and I'm just going to be glad that I can go to heaven one day and I'll go to church every once in a while and I'll sit there and I'll do a couple things. But I want to tell you, Jesus didn't come and change you and transform you so you could sit by and do nothing. He changed you so that you could help reach out and make a difference and you could see other people's lives change. He changed you so that you could be a change maker. He changed you and made a difference so that you could be a difference maker in other people's life can you say amen Jesus when he sent out the 12 he gave them five mandates I don't have this on the screen but he gave them five mandates in Matthew chapter 10 he said he said heal the sick cast out demons cleanse the lepers raise the dead free freely you have given or freely you have received freely give that's what he told him to do I'm sending you out I'm sending you out a, a sheep among wolves and when I send you out here's what I'm telling you to do I want you to go and I want you to heal the sick I want you to go and I want you to raise the dead I want you to go and I want you to cleanse the leper I want you to cast out demons you have given you have received freely now you give freely in other words Jesus said guys I've been teaching you I've been training you I've been walking with you I've been working with you and not not just so you could experience it for yourself, but so that you could go and, and help other people experience what I've shown you. Jesus did those things, and then he sent out the disciples to do the same thing. I am sending you out to do these things. I am sending you out to make a difference. And then they came back, and the Bible says in Luke 10, they came back and they began to celebrate because they said the demons are subject to 
to our name. You know what Jesus said? Don't celebrate because the demons did some things. Celebrate because your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Celebrate because of what I've done for you and how I've changed you. Listen to me. God never blesses you or helps you so that you can have power over other people, so that you can have an ego boost, and you can say, look at what I get to do. Look at all the demons that are subject to my name. Jesus changes you so that you can go and help other people experience the same change that you've experienced and what Jesus was telling them is don't celebrate that all these things happen because of you celebrate because your name is written in the Lamb's book of life and when you begin to realize that God has changed you so that you can make a difference for other people you begin to realize we are called to be difference makers amen listen it seems like in our society why bother anymore why bother you realize a study came out, I read it just a couple weeks ago, that right now for the first time in the history of our country, for the first time, there's as many people in the category of non-religious as there are Protestants and Catholics. We have, for the first time in the history of our country, we have as many people that claim no religion at all, not just atheism, they just claim we don't care about God, we're busy, we have too many things in our life, we have no religion at all, we don't go to church, we don't care. There's as many people in our country now that do that as there are that go to a Protestant or a Catholic church every single week. So sometimes it feels like, why bother? Why would you bother trying to raise $100,000 for a Hope Center whenever, what, what if everybody that goes through it doesn't get help? What if everybody who goes through it doesn't, they're not reached? What if, what, if, what if people that go through it, it doesn't help? Why in the world go out to a prison? Why go volunteer to prison? Because some of those people, what if they don't care? And I want to tell you this. The enemy wants to whisper in our ears, and the enemy wants to whisper to these lies and say it's not worth it. And believe me, I have fought it and fought it and fought it. Because why in the world are you sticking your neck out on the line for something that we don't even know how it's going to work exactly? What happens if they get in town? And what happens when we go out to the prison and, and, and nobody shows up? What happens? Okay, I'm just being honest. What happens? What happens? The enemy whispers these lies in our ears. But I want to tell you this. This week as I was in prayer over this and saying, Lord, are we doing the right thing? Are we going? in the right path the Lord reminded me of this he told me son if one person is changed if one person is reached because of this then it is worth it what price do we put on a soul a hundred thousand dollars is nothing for one soul listen there, listen going to a prison one day is nothing for somebody's life who may be changed and I want to tell you if one person can experience the difference that we've experienced then all of a sudden it is worth it all because of that it is worth the term it is worth the heartache it is worth everything we go through if one person comes to know Jesus and the reason we do this the reason we care about our church growing at all it's not so we have the biggest church in town and the largest budget in town and we can say we're bigger than every other church who cares about numbers it's because there's still one more person that can be changed by the power of the gospel there's still one more person that needs to hear about Jesus there's still one more person who needs to experience the resurrection power of Jesus Christ and because of that we push forward because of that we keep going because of that we realize that he that began the good work in us will complete it until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ and we keep going because we realize there is still one more that can hear it you know to those 90 and 9 it seemed foolish that the shepherd walked away for one to the 99, it seems stupid. Hey, hey they, they couldn't speak. Okay, I, I understand that. Maybe the shepherd was Dr. Doolittle. He could hear him, understand him. Hey, shepherd, <clears throat> excuse me, there's 99 here. Who cares about that one? There's 99 that needs you. Why in the world would you leave us to go after that one? But here's the truth in that story. Do you realize there is no 99? We're all the one. You understand that? We're all the one. And, and, the, and the problem is we don't realize we're the one. We think we're over here in the 99 and we're all safe. And I want you to know this. We all are in need of the grace and the goodness and the mercy of God every single day. I need Him every day. Not just one time that I say a prayer at an altar somewhere, but I need His grace in my life every single day. I need His mercy over me every single day. I need a strength to make it through every single day. That I need to realize I am always the one. And as long as I'm only 
concerned about the 99 as long that I don't care about the one. But when you wake up and realize that at one time you were lost and undone without God or his son, when you realize that you want other people to experience the same thing that you have experienced. You see, we call those people fanatical. We call them crazy because just be quiet about Jesus. Man, just don't talk about him so much. You're scaring some folks. Okay, you're scaring some people. Why, why are you talking about Jesus so much? But you know what the Bible says this? To them who are forgiven much, they love much. And what I've found in my life, the people that Jesus has forgiven the most are the ones that love him the most many times. And because they have experienced, they know where they came from. And you see in the book of Revelation, J John writes this. Jesus tells a church, he speaks to a church. And the church think they have it all together. The church is sitting there, they're nice pews, they're nice chairs. They got it all together, everything's good. We're just really, really nice church folks, everything's fine. And Jesus looks at them, and here's what he says to them. Remember where you came from. Remember where you came from. And you know what Paul says to those people? He named all kinds of things. Prostitutes, murderers, all these things. He lists all kinds of things. The people that we think are bad people, he lists all those. And you know what Paul said? I love this. He said, and such were some of you. In other words, before you turn your nose up at other people, before you forget, listen, don't forget where you came from and forget that you were right there at one time, but God loved you in your sin. He loved you where you were at, and God wants to change you. And I want you to know, when you realize that God has made a difference for you, all of a sudden, you want to make a difference for other people. You realize that God wants to help you and make a difference. Listen, we are co-laborers with Christ. I get to do this with God. I am working with God. I I am not doing this by myself, but I am working with God in the work that he's already doing. We are doing this together. And as we do this and reach out, more people will know about Jesus and more people will experience the power of the resurrection. Can you say amen? If you've got your Bibles, turn very quickly to Romans chapter 8. Here's what Paul says. Verse 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So what I realize is this, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is what raises me from the dead. The same spirit that, that, that raised Jesus is the one that makes my life matter. It's the one that gives me strength every single day that I realize that same spirit that was in the tomb raising Jesus Christ from the dead now lives on the inside of me. And because of that, I carry that spirit everywhere I go. Everywhere I go, I can be a difference maker. I can make a difference. Some of you will leave here today and you will go somewhere, maybe be around people where it's not very peaceful and you know what you carry the peace of God and you can carry the peace of God right in the middle of that situation and you can be peace in that situation some of you are going to leave here and go to somewhere where it's not very joyful but you know what you can carry the joy of the Lord with you and you can walk out of here and you can go and be the joy of the Lord for other people you have the chance to make a difference because the same spirit that brooded over creation the same spirit that brooded over the body of Jesus Christ and brought back life to that body lives on the inside of you. And every Monday night that I'm able to pray with these guys at Rob's Ranch, the last thing I say is this every single week when I pray this, greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. I begin to realize that I don't have to allow the world to win, but I can be an overcomer through Jesus Christ because of who lives on the inside of me. It's not me, but it's him that that lives on the inside of me. And I can get through difficult times. I can get through struggles. I can make it. I can praise my way through those things. And I can make it on the other side. Not because I'm anything. But because he's everything. And his power lives on the inside of me. And when I begin to live that way. When I begin to live and realize I'm a, I, we are people of the resurrection. Listen. I don't mean it's bad. I'm glad you're here today. Not condemning anybody. But we, there's a lot of people that just come on Easter. I don't say that on Easter because those people are here and I don't want to embarrass them. Okay? But those people, they are good. Here's what they're, they're, they're just like people that are shopping. Every other Sunday they have zero interest for 12 months. Okay? Some of y'all get that later. Sorry. Anyway, Zero interest for 12 months. And the truth is this. The reason I say that is because it's not about just getting people in a service and having a good church service. I'm, there's nothing wrong with that. I love preaching. 
I love praying with people. I love seeing God move. We went out to the prison last night and had service. And to see those guys worship and to lay hands on them, to run up there to be prayed for, I love that kind of stuff. I love it. But I want to tell you this, and I say it all the time, because until we get this, I'm going to keep preaching it. If, if what God has done for me doesn't make a difference for my life at Cash Saver, when I see somebody up there that's in need, if what God has done for me doesn't make a difference for me when I stop and get gas at Love's down here and all of a sudden somebody comes to me and says, I'm not feeling good today. If I can't pray for them right there for God to touch them, if, if what God has done in my life doesn't make a difference every single day, then I've not understood what God wants to do in me and through me. And I want you to know this is not a Sunday thing. This is not just a one time a year thing that I literally believe this. Guys, I will give my life to this thing. And I will keep pouring into people. And I will keep making a difference even whenever it's painful sometimes and it hurts sometimes because I literally believe this is the hope for the world. I believe this can change somebody's life and I believe if they allow Christ to do it, he will change them forever. I want you to know this is what it's about. It's about his word. It's about the gospel. It's about knowing a God who loves you, who can change you. And when you begin to realize it's not just about me and the leaders of the church doing this, every single one of us have been given a mandate by God to go out and to make a difference. And you know what? You say, well, I'm not you, pastor. Guess what? I am nobody. You say, you know what? Well, yeah, Jesus did that. I'm not Jesus. You know what? The same spirit that helped Jesus accomplish those things is the same spirit that lives on the inside of you. We have no excuse. We have the same spirit in us. And because of that, we can operate in that. We can live in that. We can walk in that. Paul said over and over and over, learn to walk worthy of your calling, that we are called to walk in this. We are called to make a difference and we want Landmark Church to be a church that is not just making a difference in these walls, but is making a difference in our community and around the world. The worship team, get, gather up here real quick, please, and join me. I know we have visitors here today, um, and if anybody knows me, sometimes I use... The pulpit is my therapy session. Okay, I just say things that most preachers wouldn't say. They're kind of prim and proper. And then I get home and look at my wife and say, why in the world did I say that? I'll be honest with you, this has been a tough week. A tough week. And number one, I've had a stomach virus all week. That's never fun. And then seeing someone struggle and losing a life. It's been a tough week. And I want to stand here today and listen, I, I, I love to preach and shout and have fun in church and do all that. And, and I want to do that. But the truth is, when we struggle, I like to be honest and open because I want you to know you're not alone in this. That some of you are facing some difficult things, some hard things. You're facing some difficult situations that you don't know how you're going to get around it. You're facing some things that to the natural eye and to man looks impossible. But I want to tell you, I might not be the most prim and proper pastor. I may not have the best sermons typed out the way I should. But I do want you to know this. That I want you to know that we are in this together. And if there's anything that we understand here, it's that the struggle is real at times. But what we believe is the power of the resurrection is more real than the struggle. And that's the reason I preach this, the reason it matters, is because I believe that what Christ has done for me, that if I can make it, I am not a strong person. People tell me that you're a strong person. Look at all you've gone through. Listen, if a mouse ran in here right now, I would make a brand new door right there. If I see a snake, I'm done. I'm done. Okay, you don't understand. I am a weak person. I am not a macho type man, I promise you. But what has kept me going on the darkest days of my life and what keeps me going when I get terrible news and it's hard is realizing that this is not the end, that we're going to push through this. And on the other side, God has something for us. And I want you to know today that the power of the resurrection makes all the difference in the world. If Jesus did not get up out of the grave, then none of this matters. But I believe 
with all of my heart that the same spirit lives on the inside of me. And there were times last night I was home by myself. My wife wanted to give me some medicine. I was home by myself, and I had to cry out to God and say, God, I need you right now. You've got to be my strength. I can't do it. You've got to be my strength. And you know what I did then? I called some friends. I called Jerry. I texted some people and said, I'm struggling. I need some help right now. And I want you to know that is what gets us through. It is realizing that he is the answer, and then we find people that we can lock arms with. And listen, I don't care about this. I don't mean this bad, but I want people that will get down in the ditch with me and will fight with me. I want people that will get down there and say, you know what? I don't even care if you're right right now. I'm just going, I'll punch somebody for you, okay? I don't care. I'll find out later if you're right. I'm, if somebody's fighting you, I'm going to fight them back, and then we'll work it out later on. We are in this together, and it is the same power that it raised Christ from the dead that helps all of us. God is no respecter of persons, and if he'll do it for me, he'll do it for you. And I want you to know today, whatever you're up against, whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're struggling with, there is nothing that is too big for our God. There is nothing that is impossible for our God. And if you'll give it to him, if you'll just let him have it, if you'll say, Lord, I can't carry it, he will give you strength when you cannot make it. Will you stand to your feet this morning? Would you guys begin to play something, please? I know this is very different today. For our visitors, please come back again. Don't judge me on one message, please. But I want you to know that God has placed Landmark Church in this position to be a difference maker. To be honest, I get calls all the time for people to have ideas in our community. I got a message the other day from probably the most liberal person in our community that said, I want to do something. Would you guys like to help? And I laughed. I told my wife I laughed. And I said, conservative, liberal, doesn't matter. They, they know that Landmark Church, if, if a difference is to be made, this wasn't a political issue, but if a difference was to be made, Landmark Church will make a difference. And I want you to know, we want to be a place that makes a difference. But here's the first thing. You've got to realize first, God's made a difference in you. And here's the second thing. You've got to realize your story matters. Because there are other people that are struggling with the same thing you're struggling with, and they think they can't get through it, but you can show them how the power of God helped you get through it. The Bible says this, that they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto death. And I want you to know today, whatever you're struggling with, the Bible says there is no temptation that can overtake you, that such is common to man. In other words, other people have gone through it before. Other people have struggled with the same thing before, and God got them through and God can get you through and when you share your story it is a moment of faith realizing if God gave you the power to get through he can give somebody else the power to get through amen so this morning if you're struggling in any way and you need prayer I'm going to ask you to come to the front right now I'm just going to pray over you right now if you're struggling in some area of your life and you say I need strength today I need God to get me through I just feel like we need to open these altars just come down I'm going to pray over you right now you say I need some strength as the worship team plays would you just step out of your seat right now and say I want some strength of God to make it through right now amen won't you come